Something that I'm about to share with you guys that has kind of been taking a little bit of time. So first, I just want to say that the people that I have working for me, I love them to death. And without them, um, I would not be able to be where we're at with this. So, so many of you have been like, Crystal, you live in Vegas. Please find the Haunted Museum. And so it, it took some time, to be honest. Like, it's not out there at all like you can't find you can't just google where is Zach's haunted museum you're not gonna find it so after many many hours of work I can say that we have found it out of respect of Zach and other employees that he has I will not be releasing the address because if it were my haunted museum I would not want the address released. To be perfectly honest, um, I think I have like over 100,000 followers on Twitter. Um, a bunch of you guys love me to death and I love you back, but I don't want random people just showing up at his museum. It's just not fair. Let's be real here. So this video is going to be a little bit different and I just kind of want to talk about that for a second. With that being said, I actually kind of did a little bit of a vlog on our way down to the museum. I actually made two separate trips to the museum. I don't know why, but right now he's had a lot of workers in and out. I'm assuming that's because he's still getting in like haunted artifacts and whatnot. I was actually afraid to go down during like limelight days, you know, where it's really bright outside because I didn't want any of the workers or anyone to, to get upset that we were there, that we'd found it and then kick us off the property. So I went down one night super, super late with my with my awesome team. And then we went down another night that was about dusk. So it's, it's still fairly light outside. You're going to be able to see things. You're definitely going to be able to recognize the outside of the building. Um, there's some gargoyles on one of the entrances that you'll be able to recognize from some of the episodes. I did notice that the gargoyles were not there the first time we went and they were there the second time. So I'm assuming that means they might be shooting more episodes for a future season of Deadly Possessions. Now another couple weird things that I wanted to chat with you guys about after I went to the actual museum the first time. There's going to be a part in the video that uh, I'm actually filming outside of our SUV. We drove by it. Um, the first night we just kind of did like a little bit of a drive-by thing and that was just because I wanted to, it was so late at night it's not a very safe area where this museum is located this part of town in Vegas they are trying to renovate as much as they can uh, trying to like eliminate the riffraff if you will and it's definitely not a part of town that you want to be hanging out at the time of night that we were there so one of the parts in the, the video that you're going to see when I was basically vlogging the first night that we were there, I actually ended up, I think, jumping and I kind of shriek a little bit. When I shrieked, it was because I was completely convinced. I mean, you guys, I was like 100% convinced that there was a man or like, I don't know. I don't really, I wouldn't contribute to like what Theodore looks like but it was like maybe a guardsman. Or I don't know, I just thought someone was outside in the lawn and he was watching us while we were doing this like drive-by little shot. And I actually like shake the camera cause, and you'll hear me talk about it on camera. And it, when I looked again, it was a cat. It was night, sure, you can, you can debunk, you can say that it was at nighttime and maybe my eyes were playing tricks on me. Um, I don't think that I would have actually physically shook and shaken the camera if it wasn't something more than just a cat. Could it have been a shapeshifter? I don't know. Now, to be perfectly honest, there's all kinds of different theories on what shapeshifters are. The biggest theory is 
Um, a shapeshifter is usually some sort of a negative entity, um, like demonic or possessive, and it can actually take human form, and then it can shapeshift back into animal form or demon form or whatever you want to call it. Maybe I'll actually do a video on some research on shapeshifting. I don't want to get too into it right now, but I will tell you, from my opinion, if you were to sit here and interview me right now, I completely right now can tell you 100% that I am sure I saw a man and then all of a sudden I saw a cat. I don't know, I'll let you watch some of the footage. We did drive by a couple of times and found that there was no one on the property whatsoever outside. So this, this video is a little bit different and when I mean that, it's there's a vlog at the beginning and then that starts at the location and then we're gonna cut to some more footage of me afterwards. So I hope you guys enjoy it. It's going to be a little different than what you're used to. I'm just trying to explore some options. If you don't know what a vlog is, it's kind of like POV shots of me, me shooting footage out while we're driving, and uh, I'm going to be like doing some commentary, like chat while we're doing it. And uh, enjoy, guys. I'll see you back in a few. Which is a big giant 
Ferris wheel that has little like rooms on each level that you can drink in. It's actually really expensive, but. actually really cool that's the gold buildings right there um, it's a really pretty hotel it's it's got really nice clubs and stuff and that's the kind of thing that you're into it's it's a fun place to go hang out at it's where most of my friends stay when they come to visit it's really it's kind of on the more pricey side though I think so we're getting to like the northern side of Las Vegas Boulevard, which is where Circus Circus and the Riviera used to be, um, but they're tearing down the Riviera. They're actually in the process of building this huge resort out here. It's going to be technically the first resort. It's giant. Um, it's called the World Resort. If you get a chance to like Google it, um, it's going to be like the biggest hotel once it's finished, you know, with construction and whatnot. And uh, the land that they have for it is ungodly. They just uh, broke land not too long ago, or broke ground, sorry, and started building the hotel cars. And of course, right there, this big tall building you guys see kind of off to the left is the stratosphere, which is most known in Vegas for where Tupac was shot. This part of town. So I just wanted to fill in with a voiceover really quick and explain to you what's going on on the camera. So I actually forgot to put on the GPS to where we were going and Blake reminded me to turn on the GPS. I took the audio off the video just because I don't want you guys to have the exact address. But Surrey comes on my iPhone and announces that we're 50 feet away from the actual location at the museum. And suddenly we get this EVP. This time it was a female's voice, but was she like warning us not to show up to Zach's museum? said is that it right there meaning the museum and it sounds like I got two EVPs from two entities maybe arguing one says no or go and then the other one says yeah We found it. I'm sure I found it actually. My windows are locked, never mind. I feel like a stalker with fucking cameras. With what?
that's huge. I mean, Jesus, I wish I could show you guys a better shot, but I can't. Here's the front. Let's see if I can get the shot of this in the front. Yeah, that's definitely it. Land slash. So being the law-abiding citizen that Crystal is, she did not get out and walk to make sure that her and her career are safely intact. But seeing I'm a crazy veteran and I do what I want, I'll get out and do it. There's actually a light on in the back. If you guys can see it. This looks fairly like the article that we found. Actually, it was the Las Ve the city of Las Vegas. They posted the article saying that they were rezoning this and redoing the historic district. But this is the mansion. The haunted mansion, if you will. And I won't show the address just to sort of protect Zach and his interest. But that's the mansion. And now before the cops get called, I'm going to leave. Okay guys, so I'm gonna show you the footage. Blake just walked around the building. It's definitely the building. Um, before Zach bought this building, there wasn't uh, fencing around it and there wasn't any sort of like greenery or uh, like bushes that he has up kind of blocking the view of it. Um, and because of, you know, like the new greenery he has, you can't see past it unless you actually physically get out, walk up to the building or walk around the building. So Blake got some footage of it. Um, I was kind of nervous to get out because this is just not the best area. So I'm going to walk, I'm, we're going to drive by it one more time um, from my POV shot, but let's chat about this in a minute. Last time I can get by here, guys. Parking lot. because this camera was being charged and all of a sudden after we drove by Zach's museum my battery is like almost dead. I already I have like an actual red light. Traffic. Welcome to Saturday night Vegas traffic on the strip. That's why nobody ever like I don't get my friends they're always like why do you you know why would you want to live in Vegas and why would you want to live on the strip? Like I don't, man. Nobody that's a local here would ever live on the strip. It's crazy. Somebody got pulled over in a Corvette on a Saturday night in Vegas. They're having a shitty night, man. He's he looks a little bummed out, bro. <laughs> there's giant waterfalls over there. It looks like there's. Are they like are they like getting engaged? What's going on? It's like they're having a moment. How cute. And 
we're back to traffic in Vegas on a Saturday night. Is it fun driving in traffic? So much fun. Hollywood, that's where my girl Brittany plays. She's my homegirl. Did they say they're opening an In N Out burger on the strip that's going to function 24 hours? It's an Aria. It's an Aria? But the, is it going to be 24 hours? I don't know if it's 24 hours, but I think it's in a plaza in Aria. I think, it, I think they said it's going to be the only functioning 24 hour In N Out burger. And you know, I would be willing to drive all the way down there for In N Out burger at 4 in the morning. So the last EVP that we captured, we were yet again in front of the Luxor, except this was our last time we would be driving by it. Listen. And then now we are at the end of the strip, which is Mandalay Bay. And then now we are at the end. Then now we are at the end. Then now we are at the end. Since our EVPs started with the Luxor on the beginning of the strip and ended with the Luxor when we were finished with the museum, maybe that's a sign that we need to go there to investigate. What do you guys think? All right, guys, I told you I was gonna find Zach's museum and we found it. I'm not gonna give you the location, but it's right behind me. So we're gonna actually start by walking up this direction. He's obviously planted some really big bushes and trees and shrubbery, probably to keep people out. Originally, this was an actual historic building, historical landmark, and it, it was not fenced in. He's obviously fenced it in. He's put a lot of money into it. Let's check it out before it gets too dark outside. So this is definitely the back part of it. I don't see any cameras on this side. So uh, let's walk to the other side. So these are the bushes that he's definitely built. They're super high. I would say it's like, what, 12 feet, 14 feet, something like that. So I do know that we can legally film on the sidewalk because it's public property, so we won't be breaking any laws as far as filming. But if somebody comes out from his museum and tells me to stop filming, I'm gonna have to respect their wishes. parking lot, I guess, if you will, and uh, he does have cameras up, so I would just warn nobody being an idiot and coming here and trying to break in or anything like that. It is completely fenced, completely gated, and uh, there's no way to even like attempt to look in the windows, which I would never tell you guys that was okay anyways. It does look like from here, there's some uh, gargoyle statues up over here, and I think we saw those in, um, in the Deadly Possessions episodes. So take a look at uh, the outside of the museum. Are you re-recording? Yep. So back to this side, we're now on, I guess this would be the west side of the building. And he still has shrubbery up, big like iron gates. Cannot get past this sucker whatsoever. Can you get... This looks like it's actually an entrance into uh, where they were filming some of Deadly Possessions. This is the actual entrance. Turn that down. Well, nobody's coming. Okay. This is a really big location, guys. Like, I don't know if we can kind of pan through and just show how big it is. So it starts way over here. Can you look over there? And then it pans. This is the entire building. And so it actually looks like it could be about three different buildings that are all separated or probably segregated into, like, hallways or something, which is probably what we see. So the other night when we were filming, I actually swore that I saw something like a shapeshifter that was in the grass. 
and I thought it was a person and when I looked back I realized it was actually a cat. So this is the area that I, I knew that I saw like the shape shifting. It was somewhere by this picnic table. There are notices up too that say that uh, they are filming people on the property. We're not on the property. And it looks like there's another parking lot in the back. So that's really good. I wish I could show you guys more of like a close up, but um, it's totally gated off. It's totally gated off. And I wouldn't want to piss him off anyways, you know, by going on the property, but I'm so excited that we found it. Like this is super cool. So as we walk back, as we leave, I'm going to get uh, Blake to get some more footage of the actual building. You ready? I can't really explain this EVP other than it sounds almost like a female chanting or something. But if you do notice that when the EVP is captured, our shotgun mic is actually facing the front window. Alright guys, that was the building, which is really cool, but they've had staff in there pretty much every single day, probably doing construction, probably bringing in more haunted items, so you know I'll be the first one in when he announces it. I'll catch you guys on uh, YouTube, okay? So we found the museum. That's really cool. Um, after I went to the museum the first night, which is the super late night, um, I had came home and I know if you guys haven't seen the Ed Gein video, um, I will link it below. I actually shot and filmed that footage after we got back from the museum. And honestly, between my studio, which is what you're seeing now, and my actual house, I believe something was following me home. I really truly believe that I may have picked something up while I was at the museum. Maybe it was in relation to the shape-shifting thing, I'm not sure. Um, but it was definitely some super, super negative energy. In fact, I'm going to show you guys a couple of still photos and I have this giant, um, basically dining room with a huge dining room set with a huge dining room set and um, actually it's so big I have a little mini couch that's in the back as well and I went to slightly move my dining room table that I've done a thousand times to clean the floor and the dining room table actually collapsed and it's made out of oak it's very heavy-duty oak and um, it literally just collapsed in half what sucks is that I had a bunch of crystal. I love crystal because my name is Crystal, so I collect crystal. And I had a bunch of expensive crystal that I've been given as gifts from like birthdays to holidays and everything in between. And about $2,000 of crystal was on my dining room table and it broke and shattered everywhere and I was in tears. Now the weird part about this is that because uh, this thing, whatever it was, was not going to leave anytime soon. We had some other weird things happen like door slam and um, something has been, I mean it hasn't now, but it was mimicking my voice. Uh, my mom was in my house and she thought I was yelling for her and she came out and I was like on the other side of the house. 
I've actually heard my own voice mimic too. Um, I was actually in the office section of my house and I thought I heard someone that sounded exactly like me like weeping in the living room and I thought maybe it was TV until I got up and looked at the television and the television was on mute um, because I was working I was doing some editing and stuff in my home office so I had something weird follow me home let's hope it's gone I haven't had anything um, since but the energy definitely felt negative for a little bit um, the second time that we did go to the museum, it was more of like dusk, which was the second footage that you guys saw. And I think that I could have gotten followed home again. We had some other weird stuff happen. Blake um, was doing camera work that night. He actually had some strange things happen and so did a couple of my other PAs um, with like dishes being thrown and breaking. So, you know... Is, is the museum haunted? For sure. And I think that it really knows who you are when you show up because um, that's how they communicate. And I have been told by other, like, by many psychics that people I know and people that'll just walk up to me on the street that I am a beacon in the night. Um, they basically say that the reason I get so much evidence like while I'm investigating or if I'm at a haunted location It's because if we're investigating at night and the lights are out my light is basically bright like all of these psychics have told me and, and other people that I don't even know of are psychic they say that I have such positive energy and I'm funny and I have a really big personality and that tends to make these things like want to come hang out with me I can't help it you guys should just like come chill with me in Vegas and we could have like a big ghost party or something. Uh, it happens though. It happens a lot. In fact, I want to make a video for you guys on some of the stuff I do as far as keeping my house uh, cleansed of that negative energy. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, absolutely, when Zach announces that his museum is open, he did uh, say on social media that it's not going to be open until late summer, early fall. Of course, I will be the first one down there. I've had way too many of you guys request me to go down there. I could even possibly get some video footage of inside. But I told you guys before, I don't know if he's going to have a clause where you can't have cameras in there. So I'll have to respect whatever um, they request. So I hope you guys take care and thank you for watching. Please give me a thumbs up. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel. Do you see the little ghost? It should be in one of these corners. So please subscribe to my channel. Leave me comments if there's anything you guys want me to review or chat about. Always leave me comments. I love hearing from you guys. And I will catch you guys next time. We're back from dead and